chart watchers and Decision Point faithful, welcome to this March 7th, 2022 Decision Point show. I'm sorry, I just can't believe it's already March. I'm here with my father, Carl Swenlin, and we're here to look at the charts that we think are important, certainly for the week and honestly going into the future past this week. We've got a lot to cover, but how is everything going for you, Dad? Pretty good. Yes. Enjoying a bear market day. <laughs> yeah, a bear market day for sure. <laughs> we're, we're seeing a lot of those. And I have to say the question in my trading room uh, every morning, it seems like on Mondays, of course, I don't do it every morning, but every week is, you know, where where is it going to stop? When is it going to stop? And unfortunately, I don't have any good news. So, <laughs> well, let's go ahead and look at our agenda here. Um, we're going to do our regular market overview and indicators, but Carl's got a little bit of extra stuff for us today. He's going to talk about the 70-50 rule for chart patterns. We're going to look at the FANG Plus, we call them, kind of those major um, top 10 capped stocks. We will also look at a sector overview covering that market overview and indicators, as I said. I'm gonna pick it up. We're gonna look at some of the unique pockets of strength that maybe you were aware of or not aware of uh, as far as where the market is tending to do well. I think some of them are obvious, but there might be a couple that aren't obvious to you. And then I will cover the diamonds of the week as part of that. I'm actually gonna be covering quite a few stock symbols. So take those for what you will. <laughs> That's what I've got for our agenda. Uh, I talked about my live trading room. It is free. I do them on Mondays from noon Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern. It's free. You can sign up either by using the uh, signing up for our newsletter, or you'll see my picture on the homepage of decisionpoint.com. Just like this one, click there and you can register for this free room. It's recurring. You only have to register once and uh, it's getting a lot of traction. People are really enjoying it. So let's move along here on our decision point sector scoreboard. Um, Carl just sent me the newest uh, one that we have. We have a new buy signal on utilities, intermediate term trend models. That means we got a silver cross on utilities. And we have a sell, long-term sell now for consumer discretionary cyclicals. That means that we have a death cross on consumer discretionary right now, along with XLC. But this sell signal has been there, gosh, months. I can't, I'm trying to remember. Quite a when, while. Yeah, when XLC wasn't on a long-term sell, but um, still a very, very weak, weak area of the market. So this is kind of where we're sitting right now. And I know you're gonna probably expand upon this. So let's go ahead and look at some charts and I'm gonna pass it to you. Okay. All right. Uh, the 70-50 rule is something I dreamed up on the weekend. It's not anything new to anybody, but I, it kind of defines what we already know in our hearts. Uh, it, it, when we have, uh, this is applying to chart patterns. When we have uh, a bullish chart pattern, there's, a, in my experience, is about a 70% chance that it will resolve bullishly. And uh, if, if it's in a, in a bull market, uh, in a bear market, uh, the chances are 50% or less. So, um, and the same thing applies to, to bear markets uh, or bear patterns. They are more likely to resolve bearishly, 70% more uh, likely, and, uh, and less than 50% to resolve bullishly. And it's, uh, it's, this is not based on any Bukowski uh, grade analysis <laughs> research. It's just something that I've observed over the years, and that's about what you can expect. And uh, let's just, I, I picked the, the gap stocks, I'm sorry, the FANG stocks, um, which of course no longer FANG thanks to Meta and Alphabet, but we'll work <laughs> that out at a later date. Uh, don't really have a pattern here, 
possibly a double a double bottom coming up with this bottom and, and with this uh, next bottom here lining up with something here but uh, so we've got some better uh, examples yeah here's another here's an, a double bottom potential coming up it's more likely or it's, it's more likely that it won't resolve you know, bullishly and uh, that, that this uh, will fail. Adobe's in a bear market. The, the indexes are in a bear market. So we, we've got to expect the worst uh, in the terms of resolution. Again, Amazon's in a bear market. Here's, an, here's a double bottom coming up, possibly but it probably won't work out that way. Mm. Face I know, every time I see these charts, I just, wow. Yeah, native platforms down uh, over 50% now. It, a chance at a double bottom, still not too late, but it's already failing, so it's not likely. Alphabet, double bottom here, possibly, or a trip the bottom. Again, not likely. I think it's more likely to, to fall out. MasterCard, again, a double bottom, maybe, but probably not. Microsoft. Microsoft is even in the bear market. And uh, again, here's a double bottom potential coming up. Netflix, triple bottom. Well, here you had a double bottom and it's already failed. It didn't get enough of a bounce to, to get above the, uh, the, uh, res the resistance level here. And so that's most likely to fail. Aside, aside on uh, Netflix, one of the reasons they're doing so poorly, I think, is their content. I, I, I'm a subscriber. And they have, you know, the, the premises on their their movies and series are just god awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just they're not appealing to me. Now, I, I tend to like police procedurals, mysteries, and that type of thing. But I did watch the one where, gosh, I wish I could remember the name, where the guy was, uh, uh, the woman was bitten by a, a a uh, zombie or something. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that series. It's very entertaining. So I'm not, I'm not completely <laughs> locked in, but moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did just raise their rates as well. Am I right? I'm pretty sure well, I got yeah. a notice. The only reason is still it's like 20 bucks a month, I think. And that's mm -hmm. not a great burden to plow through the awful stuff that they put out. But, <laughs> They, they, yeah, they're going to spend like twenty billion this year on, on new content, you know, and probably, wow. you know, probably three million of it will be spent on something that I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> Video, another wonderful double bottom here that did not make it. It should have, you know, a double bottom would go above this uh, confirmation level right here. Totally couldn't make it there. And it's down 40%, biggest chip maker in the world, right? Tesla, this is Fang plus Tesla list that I included, but it's interesting. It is in a uh, bear market as well. And again, here we have a possibility of a, bear, of, of a bounce here from a double bottom coming up, but again, not seeing it. And Visa finally, there here is at a double bottom, and uh, we'll see tomorrow. Maybe we'll get a bounce, but it's unlikely. I believe that it will go, that it will revive and and not break down. Mm -hmm. um, the um, one of the things is the, the war could change. Everything, if they if they get a uh, truce of some kind, a cessation of the hostilities, which would be wonderful. 
uh, that would, I'm, I'm sure, uh, spark a rally in the market. I do not think it would be enough to pull us out of the bear market. I think we've got lots more to go with that. As far as, let's go to, a, let's go to a, this chart. As far as uh, how far down, um, let me go to the monthly. The monthly chart. I'm looking at this level is where I'm looking right here. That's about a 60%, 66% uh, decline. So that's how far I think we've got to go down to uh, redeem our, our terrible ways. <laughs> and maybe, maybe finally uh, turn things back around. But those are scary numbers, I know, for a lot of our viewers. And I was on a um, show this morning, Crowd Forecast News, and they were asking about downside targets. And I was throwing out, you know, 325 for the spy, and they were just, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm Please. usually a Pollyanna. I, I can't, I can't say that we're gonna, um, yeah, we're be getting done with this. We're on the verge of a sell signal. Of course, it's this. Uh, we're still early in the month. This could easily turn around before, uh, even if it gets down below the trip, the uh, signal line, uh, it still has time to bounce back up above it. But at this point, it's not looking very good. Let me, I wanted to go to the sectors uh, before I get to the uh, indicator charts. Uh, here's another one, uh, XLC, a double, double bottom coming up. It's in a bear market. It's down 25% uh, now. I'm going to whip through these quickly because if I spend too much time, it'll be boring. <laughs> the uh, XLY, that's consumer discretionary, which just said that it went on a long-term sell signal with the uh, 50 passing below the 200 EMA. More to come on that for sure. Consumer mm -hmm. so staples. This is the next one I'm looking at to, to get a uh, dark cross 20 below the 50 to get a uh, neutral signal. And uh, uh, it's it's been hanging in there. It's, it's just jog, jogging up and down above and below the, the uh, these moving averages. And it's going to take a while. But if we get persistence on the downside in this one, uh, I think it's going to go. Uh, energy, the, the, a, one, the brightest spot in the 11 sectors right now. And uh, really nothing is there to show any deterioration. Right, the sky's the limit. Uh, financials breaking down big time today. And uh, uh, let me check that. I know it's not 20% yet. 14%. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's going to be a while for anything changes in terms of the signals, but it's headed lower for sure. Healthcare. Um, Moving sideways, it's not in the bear market yet. Industrials, not in the bear market. Materials, uh, we're having, uh, now it'll be a while before we get another crossover this significant here. Real estate, um, cooking along. We've only got two sectors, right? This is point that are by our definition in a, a bear market uh, with being 20% or lower. And one of those is technology of all things. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it's coming down to test this uh, low here. So there's another double bottom that will probably uh, not materialize. Mm -hmm. And utilities, uh, another bright spot, uh, the other bright shot, I should say, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it made a new high today. Let me just quickly look at the weekly. Yes, it's an all time mm -hmm. high. So let me go to the indicators. Again, <clears throat> bad day, BlackRock. Um, a significant uh, support at this level, and this is the next uh, level of support uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking at. Note the high volume, uh, SPX total volume today. Not good. PMO topping below the signal line. RSI has been negative pretty much since the beginning of February, honestly into January. Most of the year, negative R RSI. Yep. And here's a, something that we need to do occasionally. We're, we've changed from um, bar charts to, to a solid line to check it against the indicators. Note that we do have a new low today, closing low uh, of this uh, bear market. And uh, that, that is confirmed by the, the uh, OBV. Advanced decline lines. Again, I probably should change this chart instead of a bar chart to have a line chart because it's all about the close on, the, on these indicators here. So again, with an advanced decline volume, the S&P 500, uh, it's a new low. And uh, and it's it's actually confirming what happened today on price too when you look at it at a closing basis. Expanding of new lows today. Actually, uh -huh. if you if you look at this on again on the closing basis, we've got a lower price low and a higher uh, low on the. Hmm. New lows. I don't, that's not significantly so, but it is a positive divergence. I'm guessing not on the NYSE though. <laughs> uh, we don't have that yet. No, oh, right, not, right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, again, I, I just to be honest about it, this is a positive divergence. I don't think that's going to hold. Performance is still looking weird. The, hmm. the, the blue line is the uh, SPY, which is cap weighted, and the cap weighted stocks are, are just unwinding like crazy. The the equal weighted index, the RSP, is uh, is holding up much better than the the uh, cap weighted, which is very unusual. On the downside, usually the equal weighted uh, outrun the uh, have waited. Uh, you know, small and mid caps have been improving just a little, obviously not included in um, the spy necessarily, but we've been talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, those companies with global presence tend to be those really mega cap, big cap stocks. And so that might explain why we're seeing that uh, cap weighted index looking worse than the equal weight. Just a guess. Yeah. And uh, here's the <clears throat> weekly chart of falling wedge, which is a bullish formation. And I don't think we're gonna get an upside breakout. If we do, it'll be a bull trap. Mm -hmm. This is this chart I usually look at first every day. And <laughs> we're gonna have a, we, we're gonna, this is a downside, initiation climax, it looks like. And uh, yeah, I, I certainly accept that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Short-term indicators, A, reversed, so that this is com confirming lower tops here against lower a lower top and upper price. And the ITVM, ITVM's intermediate term charts, we've got, um, Actually, if we put a zoom on this, huh. it is a positive divergence. 
against the, this is a lower price low, but we have positive inversions actually on the PMO as well. So far, huh? <laughs> right. right. I, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to the bank with it. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I need to leave you some time. So I'm going to go right to gold. Yes. And uh, looking good. Yes. <laughs> if you're not short gold, this looks great. Let's see the that's GLD now. Here's here's the uh, gold chart, and uh, it's moving higher. The weekly chart. We still have to exceed this high, but we're we've gotten above this resistance level. This resistance level. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking that's looking very good. I'm real pleased with that. Whereas the store of value cryptos are uh, not doing so well. No. And uh, with that, I, I think I'll turn it over to you. All right. Let me do that. Hang on just a moment where I can get to it. All right. So... It was a. I think their overview is great. It really prepares us right to what I'm going to talk about now. So there have been some really obvious pockets of strength and some not so obvious ones. So the obvious, we looked at gold. We looked at gold miners. We know that that's another big pocket of strength. And of course, energy, where you've got I mean, there, there are tons of stocks in energy. We saw the participation on the, uh, the energy. Um, utilities is the area that I don't know that everybody has um, hopped into. Now, obviously, with this last couple of days here, the big time rally, um, you know, but we got the breakout. So I don't think we're through here in utilities. Um, back last week on Wednesday, we um, brought up the utility sector and seeing some strength there and it, with diamond subscribers. So that's worked out pretty well for us on, on that. But admittedly, last week's call on renewable energy, renewable energy is starting to, to move up again. But what I'm determining and deciding at this point is to stay away from anything uh, overly aggressive. Biotechs would be one, even though we're seeing some nice movement there. Renewable energy, probably not wise to get into these aggressive, very volatile areas. So with that, we're going to move into the utility sector. So utilities have been doing well. I want to show you just some of the industry groups that I have been looking at within utilities. Oh, it's the wrong way. Got to go this way. All right, so there's four main um, industry groups in utilities, and all four of these have been doing quite well. You can see just when we hover over the symbols for each of these industry groups, you can see that all of them are on a tear. Multi-utilities breaking out to new all-time highs, I believe. Uh, gas distribution, I mean, all of these are really taking off. Water is kind of the slow one at this point. Um, while I like the water chart, I'm a little bit suspect of this area of overhead resistance right now and the 200 day EMA. You know, if it's true that all, you know, rising tide raises all boats, um, possibly we'll see uh, the water index also do well, but I would be a little bit suspect of this particular area. So the one area that I really uh, have concentrated on and I talked about with my subscribers to Diamonds last Friday was conventional electricity. And there are a couple of really great stocks within there. If you wanna just go in through the industry summary this way, you can sort by scooter. It gives you some of the, the top performers up here, but I have a few that I liked in particular, and that would be Consolidated Edison. I'm not a fan of them when I pay my bill, but... Um, I like their chart right now. This isn't a textbook double bottom because it's coming off of a rising trend, but still really nice move here, continuing to break out. All the indicators are looking very good. We're seeing a little bit of overbought conditions here as far as the RSI goes, um, but the PMO is not overbought. 
And you can see the relative strength here is just going crazy. Edison, ED, Consolidated Edison, kind of performing in line with its group rather than outperforming that group. But you know what? When your group is doing this well, that's what will happen against the S&P. And Edison is doing just fine there. The other one I like is EXC. And this one's great because it just had a breakout on Friday. It's pulled back today to that breakout point. Everything's looking pretty good on this chart. Again, a little bit of struggle here with the group, but overall it's been an outperformer against the S&P. And that group, like I said, is really starting to take off right now, like those two. The other place that you may not be considering is, you know, we have the material sector looking pretty good as far as certain pockets of strength. But when you look at the sector itself, not looking quite as healthy, uh, but there are those pockets of strength. And maybe you've heard about it, maybe you haven't, but we're gonna go into the industry summary and we're gonna look at some of these groups. One of the groups that I'm finding really interesting right now within that material sector, of course, metals and mining are, are looking great. Like I said, we talked about gold miners. Uh, mining itself, you can see, is just going to the roof here. And if you look at specialty chemicals, now this one obviously is not doing very well. Commodity chemicals also look pretty ugly. But the thing is, is within specialty chemicals are these stocks that, are, that provide fertilizer chemicals. And Ukraine is a big provider of those chemicals. And now with the war in that area, uh, you're seeing a couple of those stocks really taking off. So let me show you a few more stock symbols and then we're gonna end this. And here is Calumet. This is a specialty chemicals company. I like the way that this one is looking. We have flat top, rising bottoms for an ascending triangle. That is a bullish formation. This one in this case is not in a bear market. You can see that we've got the PMO about ready to give us that crossover. I think that one looks really interesting. ICL was another one in that specialty chemicals area that I like. You can see that taking off a couple of other ones that are great, but you know, we, we talked about these in diamonds, but now they've kind of, I don't think they've run their course, but certainly you're missing out on a couple of uh, rallies with those. These are all really um, great ones to look at. And then I have just two more. I have 45 seconds. Let's look at you, 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 energy fuels and non ferrous metals. Really nice double bottom here, pull back to the breakout from that confirmation, heading higher, like all of the information in there. Wheat and precious metals, this is another way you could get involved in those miners, and this is a, a great one with that breakout too in the short term. So that is all we have for you today on the Decision Point Show. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, Dad, thanks so much for being here. Okay, I'm <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> yes, and then we will um, wish you good luck and good training. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.